Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today we're doing a snapshot of America's medical cannabis market in DC. So the District of Columbia has a unique cannabis marketplace unlike any other in the US. It's because it's the nation's capital and contends with federal funding and regulated interventions uh, like no other market in the US. In addition to the challenges presented by the U.S. government, local leaders received mixed reviews for their efforts to advance the marketplace as the voters wanted. D.C. was an early adopter of medical cannabis laws passing their initiative in 1998, but federal interference has halted its rollout, including the passage of legislation banning Washington, D.C. from using federal funds for its marketplace. So in all, the first medical cannabis sale wouldn't occur until the region until 2013. In 2015, voters passed Initiative 71, which allowed possession and private property use, but not sales. Once again, the federal government stopped Washington, D.C. from spending any federal funds in its allocation to the program. The district generated $21 million in medical sales during 2018, according to data from ArcView Market Research and BDS Analytics. By 2024, the region of 700,000 people should generate $26 million in annual sales, according to the estimates but the slow sales growth stands in contrast with most other American markets. Despite allowing out-of-state medical cannabis reciprocity, the program struggles due to a multitude of pain points. So in addition to the DC politicians not stepping up, there's a series of issues ranging from price and product to selection, as well as the overburdensome regulations and laws. Maybe the most significant problem is rampant illicit market activity. So the National Holistic Center took additional efforts to ease price concerns, offering lower income patients a 20% discount on all products. So the DC cannabis reform continues for all its struggle, continues to advance its program while striving for the adult use market that citizens voted into law. Such progress includes expanding patient consumer rights. So a new September 2019 rule allows licensed minors to consume medical cannabis on school grounds. D.C. has been allowed to stay open with curbside and delivery service, so they are an essential business, although the measures are temporary, hoping that they can be permanent. So with the ongoing back and forth between local regulators and federal lawmakers, D.C. patients face a market that has been hamstrung by virtually every turn. So in the end, D.C.'s market continues to suffer from the ongoing friction among the governing bodies. And unfortunately, it's being pushed and pulled in so many directions, but certainly not growing in the way that its counterparts in other states have. I guess they're just going to have to wait and see what the real profits are going to be before they dive in. But with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't. And I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.